Hello, David here, and welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm going to show you how to make your own MQTT push button for Home Assistant. Let's get started. If you already have devices such as the Sonoff Basic or the Sonoff S20, then this push button will allow you to turn these devices on and off. You will also be able to control two devices with one button. Here is an example of what this button is capable of. This push button is made up of a few simple components. First we have your basic plate, then we have an arcade push button, and then we have a Wemos D1 Mini. This is David from the future, so as I was getting close to rendering the video, I realized I never talked about the cost. So for the Wemos D1 Mini, if you go to AliExpress and search Wemos D1 Mini, there are a lot of results varying from 2 to $3. The buttons that I used cost about $2 each. However, doing a simple search on Amazon for arcade button, you can choose any of these if you'd like. And a simple blank plate costs about $1. So we've got three from the Wemos, two from the button, and one from the plate. There you go, about $6 for one of these devices. Alright, let's get to the software side. In order to program the Wemos D1 Mini with our custom code, we're going to be using the Arduino IDE. So before we begin, go to File, Preferences, and add this URL. This will allow your board to be recognized by your computer. Then we go to Board, and select our board here, and we're also going to select our COM port. This code is simple. You click the button once, and the light turns on or off. You push and hold the button and a different light turns on or off. The only values to change in here is the Wi-Fi name, Wi-Fi password, the MQTT server IP, and then the two different topics of the two different light switches that you're doing. Every time you either click the button or hold it, one command is being sent and that is toggle. On the home assistant side, we're going to have two automations that look for the word toggle. If the word toggle is received on a certain topic, then that light will toggle. So let's go into our automation editor. And here's what both of those automations look like. You can choose whatever you want for the name. For the trigger, however, this is where we're gonna assign the topics of our devices. My first device is a Tasmoto device, so this is the topic for it. My other device has a custom piece of code on it, so this is the topic for it. Notice that the payload we're looking for is the word toggle. For the action, however, we're going to call a service called switch.toggle. And what we're toggling is the entity ID of our switch. So then no matter what state our switch is in, every time we click that button, 
the automation will toggle it, meaning if it's on, it will turn off. If it's off, it will turn on. And now for a simple demonstration. I pulled up the serial monitor so that we can see what happens. So here I have the button, one click, it's gonna to toggle one of the lights. A push and hold is gonna to toggle the other light. And then in reverse. I've got a light behind me and I've got a light above my TV. So here's what it looks like with Home Assistant. TV light turns on, TV light turns off. Alexa, turn on TV light. Alexa, turn on basement light. We now have three ways to control one single light. Hmm, I don't know that one. So I had a double switch here in the basement, one of which I took out and made a hole in here and installed the switch just like in the previous one. The two wires that normally went to this switch, I wired them together so that the light is permanently on. Then I installed a sawn-off device in my ceiling next to the light. This push button is now powered by 5 volts. I have access to the wall behind the switch, so I wired 5 volts into it. So I have a little 5 volt USB hub over here, and I've got a few of the switches plugged into it. The other way that I've powered these up is to install one of these USB adapters inside. So here I have my button and Wemos, and inside over here I've got the 5 volt adapter. The box that I got goes inside under here, so it's an extended box, but it fills up only a single slot. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you found it helpful, please give it a like and consider subscribing to my channel for more projects. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments down below. And as always, I hope you all have a great day.